But Steve Holbrook, Second Amendment attorney and scholar and a guy who is an expert on uh, Swiss gun culture, uh, joins us. And, Steve, thank you so much for your time tonight. Well, my pleasure as always, Tim. I, you know, again, this is a story that a lot of the media here ignored, but I, I don't think it can be overstated. If this vote had gone the other way, uh, we would have been subjected to all kinds of op-eds and opinion pieces uh, in our media talking about the, the progressive uh, wisdom of the Swiss and how it was time for uh, the United States of America to join the community of nations in the 21st century. I mean, they would have used this as another call for, uh, uh, you know, really restrictive gun control laws here at home. Well, you're, you're right. The, our media likes to make the most of things like that. But the fact is that, as you said, it's been a tradition in Switzerland for centuries that um, you have to keep your weapon at home. That's a person in service. Switzerland has a militia army, something that could d- indeed be called a well-regulated militia, it does not have a normal standing force like most European countries. And um, so that's the tradition. When you turn 20, you are uh, doing mandatory militia service. You keep your military service rifle at home, and it's, um, it's there for the duration. And then when you retire from military service, uh, it, it's a full auto, so they will make it only semi-auto, and you're allowed to keep it. And so, um, uh, but, but the... The proposal would have actually banned most guns in civilian hands. It would have allowed just a very few guns, um, and the only people who could possess them would be persons who could prove some kind of hyper special need to the police authorities. So it really was a big deal as, as far as Europe goes. I mean, it would have made uh, the firearms law in Switzerland worse than Germany, France, or any of those countries. Um, and I, I think the anti gun people a bit off a bigger. Um, a bite than, than they could um, reasonably expect to win anything on. Although I have to say with this issue, um, persons who believe in the right to keep and bear arms have defeated both big and little proposals. So it's, it, it's quite a big deal, and, and as you say, uh, it would have been really blasted at us had the other side won. A- absolutely. And, you know, the, the this sort of... Uh... Uh, paternalism, uh, Steve, that you find at the heart of so many of these gun control measures on full display in the aftermath of the vote. Uh, one of the uh, newspapers, uh, Le Nouvelliste uh, in Valais, uh, said that uh, the, the people who voted uh, to keep guns were the ones whom the initiative, quote, had wanted to spare. We're just trying to make you safe and you stupid people keep voting for your guns is the attitude. Uh, on display by by much of the Swiss press, right? And they these groups purport to speak for different segments of the population, and they they do not. For example, they, the press tells you that that the women's groups are are in favor of banning guns. Mm-hmm. You go to shooting matches in Switzerland, and you'll see a lot of women of all age groups. You'll see uh, girls. Uh, I attended the the children's shooting festival in, in Zurich one year. And um, a 14-year-old girl won first place with the assault rifle. So um, th- these children, women, uh, people of all ages, they're involved in this tradition, this culture, which is um, a culture uh, uh, which embodies the, the shooting sports and, and military training, defense training, things like that. Uh, they also said doctors' groups, like the Swiss Medical Association, favored the ban. I guess it's like the American Medical Association here. They don't speak for all doctors. Yeah, I know doctors who um, they shoot pistol every year, and they're very proud of their scores. Uh, Swiss doctors. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah and you know, Steve, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I hate to interrupt, but I'm, I'm, I'm curious about something because you know, a couple of years ago, we saw another big referendum in Brazil. Uh, and, and once again, the international gun control movement was so confident that, that this gun ban uh, w- was going to be uh, uh, passed by a large margin. And they were stunned when a, a, a pretty broad majority of the uh, Brazilian voters said, no, we, we want to be able to own guns, even though the laws are so restrictive in Brazil that there is a very, very small number of uh, legal gun owners. This makes two very, uh, uh, you know, high visible uh, defeats for the international gun control movement uh, as we head towards this uh, summit in 2012 in, in New York at the United Nations on a small arms treaty. Right. The, actually, the, those two countries exhibited some very interesting contrasts 
but got the same result. Uh, Brazil just doesn't have the tradition that, that Switzerland does. Brazil was a um, Portuguese colony. Um, uh, it, it had slavery. Uh, there's a, a lot of uh, outgrowths of that today. Uh, and having a kind of a Second Amendment culture is not part of that. But on the other hand, um, in that country, it was for real. The media reports of um, uh, surveys showed clearly that this was going to pass, that a majority of people, uh, maybe two-thirds, were going to vote in favor of a complete gun ban. Um, and there were a group of activists who turned that around. One of the uh, leaders of that was a uh, retired soldier. There were uh, police um, people, uh, people from all walks of life came forward and said, look, this is not going to help anything. It's going to make things worse. And despite media opposition, they turned it around. But in Switzerland, you had a different situation. The media was starting to report alleged polls saying that uh, a majority of the people, a slim majority, was going to vote in favor of the gun ban. Uh, but as we know, the way you ask questions gives results of polls, so that if you say something like, well, do you support taking gun safety measures like the Brady people would say, you know, like the old reasonable common sense measures, which mean bans, mm-hmm. uh, or, or do you do you say, uh, did the media uh, polls in that country say, uh, do you support Swiss tradition, uh, freedom, the kinds of policies that have helped the country survive for centuries? But, but um, I, I never believe those polls for a minute. I, I think um, uh, the majority of the people in that country, they're just opposed to this. And if you look at where did the, the anti-votes come from, uh, the highest one was from Geneva, which is more of an international city. Yeah. Um, uh, other urban areas like Basel, uh, Zurich was curious. You had 50 points something percent voting in favor of the ban and 49 point something percent voting against it. I have to say it, it, the shooting is very much tradition in Zurich and, and there are shooting ranges in the city limits. Uh, but it, it's curious that it's only the highly urban areas that voted in favor of it. And if you go to the ordinary people in the countryside, uh, the vote was overwhelmingly against it. Well, uh, you know, again, very similar to the, uh, political divide that we see uh, here in the United States as well. But, I, you know, I, I think it's interesting that, you know, you look at Brazil, you look at Switzerland, and to me what it, what it says, Steve, is if, if, if people have the opportunity to cast that, 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 that free vote, uh, you know, they are going to choose, most of them will, uh, they will choose to be able to uh, defend themselves, they will choose to be able to own a firearm, they will choose that, that, uh, that, that greater uh, expansive liberty, as opposed to uh, choosing to have their rights restricted, and, and that you makes know, perfect sense to me. Of course, you know the dictatorships of the world, the ones who favor the UN anti-gun initiatives. Mm-hmm. When have they had a, a, a popular vote of any kind, much less one where the people vote on rights like free speech or the right to keep and bear arms? Can you imagine? Yeah, um, it, it, it's phenomenal. You let the people speak. Absolutely. Well, Steve, a uh, again, a big victory uh, in Switzerland this weekend, and one that I do think uh, has an impact here as well. Uh, appreciate you coming on the program, sir. And I guess one more question. Do you think the uh, the gun control uh, forces in Switzerland, will they be back? Will they try this again? Yeah, actually, in 1989, they got a, an initiative to vote on the, about banning the Swiss Army altogether, where you wouldn't even have a national defense force, and they lost. Uh, they've had other ones where... Uh, against Switzerland acquiring jet fighters. Uh, they've had initiatives against uh, setting up military bases, and they've lost all of those. The only one that they won, and it wasn't so much the anti-gun people, was the Schengen Accord, which is a, uh, a European Union treaty that had to do with immigration and security and things like that. And unfortunately, it had uh, more restrictive gun policies that was part of that package, but it was a large, large package that had a lot of other issues, and that's why it passed. All right. Well, again, Steve, I appreciate you coming on the program this evening, sir, and I look forward to talking to you again very soon.